Hey my friends, welcome to part two. Today is a very bad day. Take a look at this thumb of mine. Did some work on one of my guitars and cut myself. Not only did I cut my thumb, I cut my finger, my picking finger as well. So this is gonna be an interesting, interesting day, a couple of days. Well, as promised, I'm gonna go through some of the licks I was using in that uh, improvisation bit you saw last episode. And, um, you know, Yngwie... By the way, this is my cat, Yngwie. Why the name? Coincidence. The things I'm using when I'm improvising is mostly stuff that I picked up from Ingrid Malmsteen. You know, I, I has a lot of videos out. And when I was a kid, started like watching those uh, instructional videos, like at age 15 or something. I was completely blown away. And I was like practicing eight hours a day for about I don't know seven, eight years, something like that. Didn't care much for school, fell asleep with my guitar at night, so I was like waking up, what the hell, oh shit, the guitar is still here. You could say I was kind of obsessed, so the things I'm going to show you now is very much what Yngwie does and things that I've copied because, you know, it, it sounds really great and I want to sound great, so why not learn from the master? Right, here we go, here's the first one. That was an example of how to go from a high note to a low note, just down the neck. You can do that in any key. Uh, I really never think what key I'm in once I'm you know, up and running, so to speak. So, but that could be done in any key and any scale. If you wonder why I look like Bugs Bunny, it's because of the Swedish tobacco. Snooze. Very healthy. The next example I'm going to show you guys is uh, an arpeggio. It starts on the low E string, works its way up to the to the smallest E string, and then we're going to go from a six string arpeggio into a three string arpeggio, and that could be done in any key or any scale. It's very Malmsteen influenced. <laughs> The last two examples are scales. But you can make scales kind of interesting as well if they are clean and you know. So that was something I always aimed for um, to be able to play scales up and down just to you know be able to stop wherever I wanted and continue from there with something you know melodic. So uh, if you work on these and, and, and get them to sound clean, you're gonna have something in your toolbox that's that's kind of useful. Here we go. All right, time to wrap it up. This is the end of part two. But before we leave, I'm gonna show you guys something really cool. This blew my socks off as a kid when I heard this, and I wasn't sure if it was a, a violin or a cello, but it turned out to be a guitar. Uh, you use a simple delay effect like this and simply play scales. But you have to use the volume knob to swallow each note, the attack and the decay of each note you play. And you're gonna get this kind of violin sounding effect like this. So I'm gonna improvise something over a backing track I just made here and uh, enjoy. See you next time. Take care. <laughs>